everyone, this is Lucy from kbeautyhobby.com. I recently won some Japanese makeup from YesStyle and then combining with some of the other items I already owned, I thought I could put together a little J-beauty look and see how all these things work. Typically I focus on Korean beauty, but I've been branching out recently and having a lot of fun with J-beauty. I already did my super basic morning routine, which is usually just a toner pad, vitamin C, and sunscreen. Today I chose the Can Make UV Mermaid Gel. It is like iconic, I think, when it comes to J Beauty and sunscreens. Everybody raves about it. I usually see people talk about the Zero One, which is this one. This is the clear version. They also make the Zero Two with the yellow label, and that's the tone up version. As you can see, I have both. I'm wearing the Zero One right now. It is pretty shiny in the camera, but it's not this shiny in real life. The Zero Two, however, is super shiny. It's not actually white casting, but it makes my skin look wet long after application. My husband told me when I wear the Zero Two, I look like a shiny yellow nine ball from pool. So there's that. The Zero One. They actually look really similar, squeezed out of the tube. And here's the Zero Two. So they look identical, pretty much, out of the tube. But then when you start to rub them on, the Zero One is absolutely clear. And then the Zero Two has a bit of what they call a tone-up effect. And with some of the Korean tone-up sunscreens, you get almost like a foundation look. But with this one, it's just shine on me and it's hard to show on my hand, so just trust me on that one. Next, I'm putting this DHC lip cream on my lips just to have it, give it time to absorb a little bit. But I find that doing this makes all the lip products that I apply at the end look a lot better. But you don't want to apply this right before a lip product because sometimes that your actual lip makeup won't last as well if you apply it right on top of a lip cream. But doing this way gives the lip cream time to absorb a little bit. I do not own a Japanese eye primer. And as somebody with hooded eyes and oily eyelids, I do try to use an eye primer. So I'm going to use this Etude House Perfect 10 eye primer. It's Korean. Just put a little bit on. Does not take much, but it makes a big difference with how long the makeup wears. While that's drying down, let's address this little friend I have here with this Nature Republic concealer stick. This would not be good for under the eyes at all because it's like a crayon. I feel like it would drag the skin, but for just concealing a little spot or two, it's pretty darn perfect because it's really thick. Of course, as is the case for a lot of Korean concealers, this only comes in two colors. The shade range is not inclusive whatsoever, which is a shame. I am not going to do any kind of foundation today because I typically don't. I have been using this Can Make Marshmallow Finish Powder. It's Japanese. Somebody recommended it in my group, Korean Beauty Fanatics, and it's amazing. It has SPF 26. Not enough SPF to be a standalone sun protection, but it's really nice for reapplying. But even without the SPF portion, I really enjoy the finish of this, just for makeup purposes. So I've actually been using it every day. If you've seen my YesStyle J Beauty unboxing video, you probably saw that this got smushed, destroyed in transit, unfortunately. So all the powder kind of like fell out. I did manage to press it back down. I did read online that you can mix it with rubbing alcohol, et cetera, et cetera, kind of reform it. But since this has SPF in it, I didn't want to add anything to it because I still wanted to retain the SPF property. So I just did my best to press it down. YesStyle did send me a replacement already. I received it yesterday, but I'm still using this one because it's okay for home. As long as I don't put it in my purse, it's fine. And I'm going to keep the replacement one in my purse for the application during the day. But as far as like foundation, this is all I've been doing on a daily basis. I just, I cannot be bothered to do BB cream or anything else. You can see how it took that shine from sunscreen right off. But first, of course, always let your sunscreen set really well because you don't want to be poking at it with a brush or a puff or anything else before it's had a chance to form that fill. 
And even when reapplying the powder throughout the day, I haven't noticed it get cakey or like too much or settle into any creases. It's a really good product. It does come in a couple shades. Definitely check it out. I'll put links for everything in the description box. I also have an affiliate discount code with YesStyle KB Hobbit. You can enter it under reward code. It will still combine with the coupon codes for all the promotions that YesStyle runs. You enter coupon codes under coupon code and my code under reward code, and then you can save the most amount of money on there. I think the eye primer has had a chance to set now. I have this Can Make Princess Eyes palette in the color 17 and it has little instructions on the back of which colors to use on which area and it gives you two options. Most of the palettes here had some sort of pink and I'm not a big pink person so I picked the one with the least amount of pink in it. The brush it comes with is rather crappy as is often the case with the included brushes. Looks like this. I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna use my own. So I'll start with this color A, they call it. It's the lightest one. It's supposed to go right under your brow bone. Now, I'm not going to follow the little chart that the makeup has on the back because I have hooded eyelids and I don't think you'll be able to actually see any of the colors if I do it the way they say. So when I do my makeup, instead of going from lightest to darkest, from top to bottom, I go from lightest to darkest from side to side and that way you can still see all the colors when my eyes are open when this part of the eye is completely hidden. My entire family is currently sick so you may be hearing some coughing and such and I can't mute them unfortunately so that's what you have to put up with. I'm sorry about that. Picking up the next darker color and just applying it going from the center upwards these are not super easy to blend. I am not a makeup pro whatsoever. I focus more on skincare, partially because I'm too lazy to apply makeup. And usually if I get my skin looking how I want with skincare, I don't need to worry about as much makeup, like as far as foundation and such. But dang, these are not easy to spread at all. I'm skipping right over the pink color, going into the darkest one, and I'll focus on like the outer third of the eye with that. Let's see how that goes. Okay, that's pretty good. And I usually go from that lash line to where I can feel the edge of that brow bone and try to blend it fairly well. Okay. It's actually not bad. This one's blending a little bit better but still, the formula is really dry, and maybe that means it will last well, but like as far as wear, but dang it, it's not the easiest thing to blend. Mm, yeah, not, not the best. I don't think it looks half bad, and the eyeliner and mascara will probably help, but it's... Yeah, I've definitely had eyeshadows that are way easier to use than this. And then the little instructions, the one part of them I will follow, say to use this middle part, and I know it's very reflective, but it's like a shimmery lilac or shimmery like slight, lightly 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 purple um, it says to put that under the lower lash line so let's see what that looks like for eyeliner i have heroin make eyeliner it is a waterproof and the color is i think brown black or just brown it's a really cool easy to use gel liner and it does not smudge on my upper lid which is great. The key with liquid eyeliners or any eyeliners is to do the line thinner than you think you want it because then when inevitably something goes a little bit wrong and you have to correct it and make it thicker while correcting it then the end result will still be good and not like half the eyelid. Unless you want to have the eyelid, which is fine as well. I remember when winged eyeliner used to take me half an hour. I'm not even exaggerating. And it doesn't anymore, partially because I got better and partially because I've lowered my standards considerably. I don't currently own Japanese mascara. I used to. I had the Shiseido one with little fibers, which is pretty good. And then I had the Kiss Me Heroin mascara, which does not come off with anything except for waterproof eye makeup remover. None of my cleansing oils could touch it, my cellar water, nothing. It had to be waterproof makeup remover. It's really good, but it's just 
on a daily basis it's way too much work for me so i use this heimish mascara it's a tubing kind it's korean and basically it forms tubes on your lashes they don't smudge or flake but to take it off all you need is water you just get them really wet and the little tubes that have formed slide off and they don't dissolve they just slide off like little pieces of i don't know thread almost so because they don't dissolve you don't get raccoon eyes there's no that dark shadow because you missed some or whatever it's super super easy my eyebrows are actually tinted i do that myself it's very easy and inexpensive i'll put a link in the description box to the video where i show you how to do that and tell you what i use so i don't fill them in because they're pretty thick already i just use a brow mascara for a little bit of a color especially as that tint starts to fade toward the end of the month and then to keep them in place i have this isehan kiss me heavy rotation eyebrow mascara in the color 08 ash gray i try to pick the colors that have a cool undertone or a cool tone to them because i find that a lot of brow products i see online that are more brown have almost a reddish tint and while my hair is red i really don't want red eyebrows the applicator looks like this it is super simple to use if you want to fill in your eyebrows first you definitely can and then this would be your last step in the description or in the instructions, it says to brush in the opposite direction of the hair growth first, and that just helps you build a little bit of a volume, and then to finish by brushing in the direction of hair growth to kind of make everything nice and neat. If you get a little bit on your skin, which I have done many, many times, just let it dry and then wipe it off. And this comes off really easily with any cleansing oil you don't need any kind of special product if you do happen to touch your eyebrow here and there during the day this does not smudge and i don't know if it's because i don't fill my eyebrows in or um, because of the product but to me this looks really really natural but still nicer and more pigmented than my actual real brows. I was reading the other day that with age, we start to lose contrast in our faces. So the cheeks start to go paler, the lips, even sometimes the eye color, and definitely the hair, like eyelashes and eyebrows. So one way to easily look a bit younger is to pump up that contrast a little bit more, of course within reason, but just putting a little tint on the lips, getting the eyebrows a little bit darker, putting a little mascara on. If it doesn't even add volume or length, that's fine, as long as there's a bit darker, a little bit of more, more of that contrast. And I find that when I tint my eyebrows, I swear my face kind of looks slimmer. I don't know why, it's probably just because maybe the focus is more on the eyebrows, but I like the effect. Last but not least is the Can Make Lip and Cheek Gel. I have the color 06 Plum Sugar or dark plum sugar. I found that this was really difficult to judge by just the pictures on YesStyle, what color this would be. I won these from YesStyle, but I got to pick my colors, thankfully, which is really nice. I really appreciate that option. There's nothing worse, I think, than getting makeup that isn't up to your standards or up to your liking as far as colors. It looks like this. I am going to use my fingers because I'm fancy like that. So let's try. It comes off like that. It's super easy to blend. Just going to put a little bit on my cheeks, just a tad, and then blend it up. And my little friend here, you may notice, isn't totally covered, and I am completely okay with that. I know that some people like really full coverage foundations, things that make your skin look like it's a perfect wall with no texture and no imperfections and i don't mind skin looking like skin to me the overall impression of your face of it being fresh and youthful and taken care of is more important than having to be actually cosmetically perfect and i'm also not the best at makeup i probably couldn't get it perfect no matter how hard i tried and i think at least for me it's actually better to see a bit of an imperfection or a bit of a pimple showing, whatever, than to see a ton of makeup caked on top of that because you can still tell that there's something under it, but then it will look like I just tried too hard. So I 
just ignore it. It's fine. It's all good. Who cares? The DHC lip cream by now has soaked in mostly. I can still feel it on my lips as far as they're being plump and nice and soft, but I don't feel that immediate like wetness post application. So while this is SPF 24, don't count on just this for your SPF for the face. Obviously, you're not slathering it everywhere. On the lips, I'm not sure if that's enough. If I'm going to be outside all day, I will probably use an actual like dedicated SPF lip balm that I can easily reapply. But I just see it as a nice bonus that it has SPF 24. All I do is pat it in, in the middle, because it's not a super precise product to apply. I suppose I could use a tiny brush and paint it on perfectly and cover all the little corners or whatever of my lips, but I don't need perfection. Still looks like me, but better. The last time I did one of these videos, I did I filmed the makeup one and then I filmed a whole bunch of other videos to put out during the month because that's what I usually do. It takes me way too long to set everything up, you know, drag my lights out and whatever. So usually I just put my makeup on once and then film the whole month of videos. Well, on one of those videos, somebody asked me if I had looked in the mirror before filming. I'm like, mm, whatever do you mean by that? Yes, I did for like half an hour while doing it on camera but thank you for your mean comment. So if you have something mean to say, just don't, you know, I'm a real person, it's cool. I know I'm not perfect at makeup. You're not breaking any news to me here. So overall, I really like the sunscreen, even though it's a little bit shiny, it's actually not bad. And it looks shinier on camera because it forms a film and it reflects the light from my ring light. No big deal, it is less shiny in person and it's easily covered with powder. I love the powder, love the eyeliner. Don't love the eyeshadow, although now that it's on, it's actually not bad, um, but probably wouldn't be my first choice as far as how easy it is to apply. It's, it's just not that easy for somebody who's not a pro like me. I really like the lip color. It's not the most long lasting, but it's fine. To me, it looks like that candy lips look, like when you ate candy with a bunch of dye in it and it just kind of colored your lips. I really like that. And the DHC lip cream is really good. Nothing bad to say about the eyebrow uh, product. It's not earth shatteringly different from the other eyebrow mascaras that I've used, but it's good and I like the color and I like how big the container is. I think it'll last me a long time. I'm not even sure if I can finish it before it expires. Thank you very much for joining me today as I explore some of the Japanese makeup and branch out from my typical Korean options. If you have a favorite J Beauty things that you think I should try or that you want to share with other viewers, please leave me a comment. You can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, on my blog kbeautyhobbit.com, and in my group Korean Beauty Fanatics. I will see you in my next video. Until then, please remember to always listen to your skin and be nice in the comments, not just to me, but to everybody. Thank you. Bye.